Hi, and welcome to Science Fiction and Fantasy Linguistics. I know it's been a while since my last video, I'm sorry about that. I moved to Germany and getting my residence permit and all of that sort of thing was sorted out. Took a lot of brain power, I gotta say. Um, and also the construction upstairs just got really bad for a while. They were jackhammering the roof and it was not super great. Um, but they're done jackhammering now, I hope. So today I wanna talk about cussing. And just to put this up front, in case you're sensitive to that sort of thing, this video is going to contain a lot of cussing. Different cultures have different taboos. Cultures with a shared heritage often have similar taboos, but it's not identical. It's these taboos which give rise to cuss words. And I'm going to talk about English swearing here because I'm a native US English speaker. And that's what I know. Also, my source for most of this information is Holy Shit, A Brief History of English Swearing by Melissa Moore. And if you're interested in the topic, I recommend it. It's well-researched and not dry. It's just a lot of fun to read. In English, swear words have changed over time. Things that were once taboo are not, and things that were not taboo are now. English swears and curses fall broadly into two categories, the holy and the shit. The holy refers pretty obviously to religion, and because of the history of Anglophone nations, this means Christianity. In the Middle Ages, people swore by God's bones and that sort of thing, and believed that if they broke their oath, literal Jesus in literal heaven would literally be injured by their oath-breaking. So swearing and cursing and taking an oath all sort of developed the same uh, connotation around this time. If you told someone to go to hell, it was a literal wish for them to be sent to hell when they die. So these phrases were taboo and shocking because 700 years ago, people thought differently about religion and its place in life. And then the Protestant Reformation happened and the Enlightenment came around and thinking about religion became less literal and these curses lost their punch. We still use them. We still have plenty of them, and uh, depending on who you are, they are more or less shocking. The shit refers to bodily functions, as you might guess. In the present day US, we still have half a dozen words you can't say on the radio or on public TV, including shit and fuck. For most people, fuck is the biggest bad word in English, right up there next to cunt. We call it the F-bomb, and PG-13 movies get exactly one of them. And if they use too many, it, the movie gets an R rating. On the other hand, it's widely regarded as the most versatile cuss word in English, and a lot of people, myself included, use it all the fucking time. As the joke goes, it can be pretty much every part of speech, as in fuck, the fucking fuckers fucking fucked. We've got an interjection, an adjective, a noun, an adverb, and another adjective. Both of the adjectives are verb forms, the present and past participles, respectively. Fucking and fucked. So why is that? How can the worst bad word in English be the one we use the most? Like all things is context. I'm not going to say fuck in front of my grandmother unless something is really wrong. But, I'm around my, but if I'm around my friends, I don't censor myself. Unless I have friends who really don't like cussing. So is fuck losing its punch? Maybe, but I don't see it becoming a regular old word like hell in my lifetime. Maybe a couple generations after that, if we still have a planet. Uh, but that's not really what I wanted to talk about. I want to talk about cussing in science fiction and fantasy. I'm not going to talk about print media, though a lot of the societal norms around taboo language apply. There isn't a Federal Communications Commission fining people for putting bad words in books. I'm also going to draw a line between streaming and cable TV and network TV and focus on the latter. The FCC doesn't limit what can be said or shown in cable or streaming series, which is why when The Expanse moved to Amazon Prime from sci-fi, Christian Evasorala became the foul-mouthed granny we know and love from the books. 
there's a linguistic phenomenon known as taboo deformation, which is changing words that are taboo into words that aren't taboo, but are still recognizable as substituting for the, the taboo word. In English, we see this as shit becoming shoot, or sometimes sugar, uh, damn becoming darn or dang, Jesus Christ becoming Jiminy Cricket or Judas Priest, and that sort of thing. Fuck has a lot of deformations, as you might guess from its being such a popular swear word. Freaking, frickin', fuggin', feckin', friggin', effin', eft. There's also the substitute screw, which derives from the sexual connotation of fuck. They aren't all one-to-one -one substitutes. Freak you sounds silly, where screw you doesn't. That's freaking huge is fine, but that screwing huge is very weird, and I can't imagine oh screw was an interjection. Maybe oh freak, or some other sound substituted word like frk. Fark. Uh, sadly, I don't have access to academic databases anymore, so I can't see if anyone has studied this. And I'm just going to go off my hunch. The ones that sound more like fuck, with the initial fricative and the final plosive, feel more like the original and are more satisfying to use as substitutes. So... Returning to the SFF vein, when people wanted to make TV shows for broadcast networks where the FCC restricted what they could say, you got deformations, like Frack from Battlestar Galactica or Frell from Farscape. I personally find Frack a more satisfying curse than Frell. Frell just feels soft and squishy, and Fuck and Frack just have that, they just have that earthiness that Germanic speakers love. So another option for broadcast TV, which is one Joss Whedon, you know, chose for Firefly was to have cussing being a non-English language, in this case Mandarin Chinese. Now, the FCC doesn't regulate Chinese, so people can say the something really horrible in Chinese and no one will know unless you speak Chinese, which most Americans don't. There's a whole lot of different things that writers can do and have done to fit their their cussing to their culture, which is an important part of linguistic world building. So if a writer has something that's taboo in their culture, they're going to have their, uh, their cuss words based around that. So when you have The Expanse, I, I just really love that show, okay? Um, in The Expanse, you have Things like Philota, which, according to the uh, the guy who invented the language or developed the language further from what it is in the books, um, it's a floater. Because when you use a toilet in zero G and you don't use it right, you'll have some little floating shit left in the in the washroom. And that's pretty gross. So calling someone a floater, like a floating turd, that's, that's pretty gross and insulting and other things like that. Fantasy writers do a lot of this too. They, especially they're working in uh, secondary worlds that aren't Earth or Earth-based. Uh, they have, they'll have different gods, so the protagonists and characters in general will swear by whatever god's name or by the maker's tits, or whatever, by the mother's tits, or by God's balls, and that sort of thing. And that's pretty creative. It's based on reality, and that makes it feel feel real, or at least real enough. In N.K. Jemisin's Broken Earth trilogy, the cuss words are based around rocks, and the fact that Earth is literally trying to kill them. Like the... Uh, the god, I guess, that that inhabits the planet is angry at them for something that's kind of a spoiler for the end of the first book. And when you find that out, things make a lot more sense. But anyway, um, so they say things like evil Earth because the earth is literally evil. Um, and rusting 
is one of the things they use a lot for instead of like fucking basically so rusting this rusting that you rusting idiot kind of thing rust is bad and when rust happens on metal it's hard to fix especially when you're in a uh, in a society where t technology has been thrown back a few th thousand years right so there's a lot of things that you can do to cuss and swear in in science fiction that are based on the principles that we use in reality for making up swear words and we can go from there right when my column on this went live on tour.com the comments were it was very popular it was so many comments with people chiming in and saying what their favorite uh, cuss words were from science fiction or fantasy tv leave a comment with what your favorite cussing is from science fiction and fantasy see you next time i hope uh don't forget to like and subscribe share with your friends and join my patreon to support me making more videos thank you